From CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Good morning, I'm Jim DeFeedy and welcome to Facing South Florida. After nearly 14 years as Miami-Dade School Superintendent, Alberto Cavallo announced he was leaving Miami and headed to Los Angeles, where he would oversee the nation's second largest school district. I will miss Miami. And even though I will be calling Los Angeles home, Miami will always have a special place in my heart. Last thing I will say is, the left, never allow anyone to tell you that it can't be done. I decided to drive today through the neighborhood blocks away from here, where about 29 years ago, 30 years ago, I was homeless. This has been an honor, a privilege, a story that only in America can it be told. Carvalho, during his time in Miami, raised test scores, increased graduation rates, and spearheaded ballot measures to increase teacher pay. He had a large ego, and that could rub some people the wrong way. But as long as he produced results, there wasn't much anyone could do to challenge him. He faced repeated battles with the state legislature that pushed funding away from school districts in favor of charter schools. And when it came to COVID, he repeatedly defied the governor. Shortly after the announcement was made, I spoke to Carl Hernandez Matz, the president of the teachers union, and we discussed the future without Carvalho. But I started by asking for a reaction to his leaving. Well, I think like everybody else in the community, we were surprised. Um, this is not something that we had um, any kind of prior information to before the announcement was made or before it started to leak. And um, it certainly caught us by surprise, but um, I mean, we wish him well. He has been um, you know, a, a strong superintendent for Miami-Dade County Public Schools. We've certainly achieved a lot of um, you know, recognition for the hard work and, and the things that are happening in our public school system. We're proud of that. And um, you know, we, I think he's gonna do great in LA. Do we know what the next steps are going to be in terms of an interim? I have not heard what's going to happen uh, in terms of an interim. I believe that is a discussion and a process that the school board is currently undertaking. Uh, my best guess would be that it is somebody from his cabinet, somebody that understands, you know, the, the multiple projects that he was working on, uh, certain, um, you know, curricula or things that initiatives that he was spearheading uh, in order to make sure that those are implemented with fidelity. I would assume that somebody from his cabinet would be an interim, but um, I've been working with the superintendent for nine years, so I've never been involved in the transition of a superintendent. So this is all completely new to me as well. You know, we look at this and we see him going to L.A. And I'm trying to figure out, is he leaving Miami or is he going to L.A.? You, you understand the difference I'm trying to draw there. In other words, does he feel as if his time here in Miami has run its course? He's got a board that may not be as malleable as he would like or has been questioning him and and really sort of a bit petty. I, I'll say it, I, whether you do or not, I don't know. But is he leaving Miami or is he going to L.A.? I think it's a little bit of both, Jim. I think that he is... Um definitely considering all the things um, that have happened. I mean, let's be honest, uh, you know, we've seen um, how disruptive um, the school board meetings have become. It's almost like a circus show. You see people that have political agendas that are coming in and uh, they're saying things about the school board that are not true. Um, it's a small but very loud group. Um, you know, we've seen how controversial the pandemic has made public schools, even though it should have never been controversial and it should have never been politicized because it is a health crisis. And we have seen, we've witnessed um, that it is a school board um, of members that are not as supportive to all of his initiatives as they had been in the past. And I certainly think that all of those things um, have played a role in his decision to leave to LA. 
but it seems like 14 years may just be, you know, at, at some point you can't stay superintendent in one place without building up at least enough enemies or enough critics to where they're going to snipe in every way possible, including from members of the board and run you out of town. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, he certainly has extended what we consider the regular lifespan of a superintendent. Uh, his longevity as a superintendent for a large urban district has surpassed the rest of the superintendents. Uh, so that's certainly an anomaly. And, um, you know, it, all those things, like you said, you know, they do play a factor. Um, I do think that um, he sees the opportunity of starting fresh somewhere else, of um, putting in place some concepts that he's already working um, on. And of course, also being innovative and seeing what else he could pursue. Uh, there is a difference, obviously, in the politics of, you know, Los Angeles compared to the politics of Miami. I think that is what is going to maybe catch him off guard. Uh, it is certainly a more progressive um, school district, um, a, a more progressive state. And, you know, I just hope that he has a very strong relationship with uh, the teachers union in LA. Um, you know, they are a, a strong union um, that that great, good for them. They don't live in a right to, right, uh, right to work state or like I say it, work with no right state. So they do go on strikes and their actions are much different than what we see here in the state of Florida uh, because the politics are very different. You know, it's uh, I, I'm old, so I remember Seinfeld episodes and there was an episode about Bizarro bizarro world where everything was the reverse from what it was, you know, and there was bizarro Jerry, bizarro George, bizarro Elaine, the whole crew. And so the bizarro world is exactly what he's going to. He's going to an almost an exact opposite of what Miami is here. You know, you had a governor, you had a governmental system that was opposed to mask mandates, opposed to lockdowns, you know, not really pushing the vaccine. Whereas in California, he's going to a state and a district that mandates and requires all staff to be vaccinated. So it is the other side. Do you think he'll be more comfortable in that world than he was in this one? I think he might be. I think, you know, at the end of the day, he is a science teacher. Um, and he has always said that he wants to follow the science. And, you know, that part, I believe um, that had been really difficult for him because uh, that aspect was questioned um, a lot. And of course, because we don't have the support of the governor of the uh, of the state, um, DeSantis, or state legislature, we had seen so much defunding of our public schools for so many years now that we, uh, you know, gratefully, we were able to work together with the superintendent with the initiative of the referendum, get that passed so that we could pay our teachers adequately, get some compensation that was really well deserved for a district that merits it. I think it's gonna be super refreshing for him to be in a place where um, that is not the norm. It is bizarro world as you have so uh, uh, you know, rightfully um, described. Um, it's gonna be very different, but I think it's gonna be something that is pleasant for him. And I think it's gonna give him opportunities to try and do some other things that he was restricted on and could not do uh, here in the state of Florida. Well, let's just say here in the state of Florida and, and with the Miami-Dade yeah. School District, uh, what's your biggest worry, concern going forward, not knowing you know, what the future holds with the new superintendent and, and the role that the board may increasingly play as they pick someone new? I think that we are in a very vulnerable state. Uh, we are in a situation where we don't know who's next. And so, you know, all those details are, you know, things that are not only bring uncertainty to us, um, and, you know, we don't want that to, you know, dismantle, you know, all the progress and all the things that we've been able to, to uh, really, you know, gain and capture and, you know, the, the, just the work that we've done here in Miami-Dade County Public Schools. Um, we're concerned that um, there are opportunists out there. You know, we see political agendas, even with the small group of people that have been coming uh, to the school board meetings to disrupt our, our school board. You know, we hear the threats of them trying to infiltrate the school board and they're trying to privatize our schools, um, an increase in vouchers, um, taking away tax dollars to privatize our, you know, our, our, our work sites. All these things are things that we worry about on a daily basis. 
I think now because the superintendent um, is leaving this uh, place and now they're going to be looking for somebody to fill in uh, those shoes, uh, we have to worry. We have to know who this person is. Do they have an education background? Do they know the community? Do they understand our work um, environment, our needs? Of course, the politics of this everything that we've had to push back in terms of policy. Um, now we know that the governor has said there is not gonna be no FSA. Great, so what is it? Or was that just all talk? How is that going to you know, impact our students? And then of course, all the progress that we've made, um, you know, if it's a person that really cares about education, we'll continue to implement what's good, we'll make things that need improvement better. Um, but the, the, the nature of this um, being followed by people who have a political agenda, who want to privatize our schools, all these things are certainly concerning. And so we're gonna keep an eye, we want our, our, our eye on it. We wanna make sure that the school board is making uh, sound decisions and that they're not uh, you know, pawns in this game, which it could obviously turn that way very fast. Well, I guess that's the heart of the question I, I should be asking, which is, do you believe this school board, as it currently is constituted, has the best interests of children and students and, and staff and faculty in mind as they move forward? Do you trust I them? I guess what I'm saying is, do you trust this board? I believe that they have had uh, the best intentions. Unfortunately, we have seen a lot of political pressure on them and we have seen them cave uh, you know, to different uh, um, pieces of, a, of agenda items or propaganda. And so that is certainly something uh, that causes me to just pause and you know, just be very reflective on what it is that they're doing, who they're talking to, what the movements are, and of course, who they believe is the best person to fit this, um, you know, this profile. I mean, something that's very interesting is that we've never had a woman superintendent. Um, in you know in in all of our history, I think it's time for a woman. I think it's time for an educator that understands um, you know what is happening here on the ground that comes from our community. Um, but of course, uh, the 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 expertise level has to be there. The commitment has to be there, and of course, the the pure intention, that heart, that this is really about our public schools, about our children, our community, our faculty and staff, and not that this is a political stepping stone uh, for some other agenda.